This is our first episode of uh, Council Conversations. You know, we do this every couple of years, and it's special because we have we have uh, Councilman, uh, the Reverend Dr. Charles Coleman. Thank you for joining us. Thank Dr. you. Yeah. And uh, I think there's a whole lot uh, that people need to hear about. And, and, you know, you are one of 12 who uh, approve, deny, you know, the, the, the father's if you will, of, of the city of Jonesboro. And you've been doing this for a minute, haven't you? Well, uh, this is my 13th year. As a matter of fact, uh, it's gone on uh, 12 and a half years. I was kind of looking at the calendar today. June is almost finished. That means 12 and a half years going on 13 now. Uh, it's, it's been a joy, but it's also been a challenge. Uh, I'm more of a, a community person. Uh, and sometimes listening to different ordinances and different uh, things that we do. Uh, a matter of fact, I just talked with a guy the other day and he kind of asked me, how do I vote? Uh, for the community is concerned. And I remember telling him that I have voted for a lot of things I didn't like personally. Mm -hmm. But because I think Jonesville needs to grow, I've also voted for things that I didn't like personally. But I think for the growth of the city, I think we need to leave our personal opinion out of it. It needs to be what the city needs, what the city can grow. And I think that's when I think council persons get in trouble when they try to put their, as the old folks say, those two cents in, yeah. instead of looking at the bigger picture. Right. Uh, to me, it's always been about the bigger picture, the growth of Jonesville, and I haven't changed. And that's and that is a uh, description of integrity when you are looking out for beyond yourself, beyond even your own time yeah. in, in office here, because you are building a Jonesboro for the future. Absolutely. And in the 13 years that uh, Dr. Coleman has been on this uh, uh, panel, Jonesboro has been constantly growing. Oh, man. So that is a that's a good thing, but it comes with. Um, when it comes things. with headaches to come through, as I say repeatedly, comes some challenges. Um, I personally think we can grow faster. Uh, I think we need a little bit more um, educated counsel for us, what the community does. I, I think there needs to be more involvement. You know, every year I go to the uh, AML, yes, you do. which is Arkansas Municipal League, and I promise you, I learn something every year. Not every other year. Uh, right. and that's why I, I always sign up to go. And I think that uh, learning rules and regulations is fine. Mm -hmm. But really looking at it from a global perspective of how would your children uh, react to what you vote on or that would help them later on down the line? Uh, how, how would they question you or how would you answer them if you voted on something that you did it personally instead of something that's going to help them when they get be a dust when we when we die off, or when we go off scene because that's going to happen. I mean, you're going to die and you're going off scene. And uh, my goal is to leave something for somebody to be happy with. Um, maybe they may not so much happy, but maybe they will understand what we had to go through. To uh, it, it's kind of like the uh, I've been asking for ten years for a swimming pool. Mm -hmm. We finally gonna get a swimming pool. We're gonna get one. Well, the North objective of, of the yes. swimming pool that we're trying to get is not so much the swimming pool. Children can't swim. And in my ward, particularly on the north side, you have a a monster growth of black kids, Hispanic kids, white kids, all different cultures. They can't swim. And as a little survey I took, even we have some grown folks that can't swim. So the swimming pool wasn't so much a Charles Coleman thing. It was, man, we need to do something because uh, these kids, some of them can't travel. Right. Uh, give a day like this. It's hot out there today. 
Sure it is. And it's, I mean, it's too hot for them to go anywhere or try to go barefoot because they run it barefoot like we did sure, sure. when we were kids. Yes. So they need something in the proximity that if they do go, they want to get their feet scorched, they can go swimming <laughs> or go play in the water. So right. little things like that. It's, uh, people think, well, you just, you're trying to uh, just get something. No, I will always, always look beyond me. Uh, and, and that's just the way it is. Yeah. You know, and, and learning to swim is such a confidence boost, too. Yeah. That's good for people of all ages. But, well, but you've, you're talking about a new a new pool that we're uh, that the city is building at uh, behind Parker Park Recreation Center. Right. And that is the first of more pools that we hope to open. Absolutely. In in parts of the city that need some. Of course, we've still got. Uh, the, the, our, our largest indoor pool is at uh, the Y, and we're opening up that rec center too. Right, uh, right, right. And it's going to be called the Y, I believe. But right. it's something that Jonesboro has it's grown, has needed more of, and has not kept up with. Well, so. it's it's not just a swimming pool mentality. It's a swimming pool that you know Jonesboro has really outgrown itself. Uh, we're kind of behind in my head of a lot of things that we need to get different type of parks, different places all, all over Jonesville, not just one area. Mm -hmm. uh, people need to be able to, uh, I guess I hear the statement there, well, we can go someplace else, you know. Well, everybody don't have the money to go someplace else. Right. And so it's uh, these type of uh, parks and things that we need all over Jonesboro, uh, we're just gonna have to do uh, the multi complex center. Uh, you know, I fought for years for that. Right. And and so, praise the Lord, we, we're going to get that in now. So that's, that's going right. to take, because that's also going to help the economy. Uh, some people don't get that. Right. You know, uh, I'm, I'm really kind of a strange person, especially according to my wife, uh, that I pay tithes, I pay taxes. And so I don't have problems when, let's say, let's get something that's going to help the whole community. Uh, the multi complex is not going to help me much. You know, I'm right. 70 years old. I'm right. like, what am I going to do? With that thing going to roll all on the floor or doing nothing. We can play senior basketball if you want to. You know, well, I might look at it. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Me too. I'm not going to play defense. But no. I'm too busy. I got other things I'm doing in the community, community gardens and those type things. And I'm also pastoring two different churches at the same time. So I don't have much time. And so in doing that, it allows me also to look at the complexity of the city as a whole that these things are going to help when you you know just have a if you if we had a swimming man tournament god look how much money that would bring in to help us because the other thing that the city does yes we get a lot of grants but let me explain in my head grants can't run a city correct we have to have hard money right you know and i think hard money will come from the multi-complex center, other things that we're trying to do in Jonesboro. Right. And the grants program is, is a way to stretch your taxpayer dollars, but it also comes with ties, commitments, and there's no guarantee, as we know, Absolutely. that you're going to get the grant once Absolutely. you apply for it. Absolutely. So it's competition. But it's, um, uh, and, and again, your experience has been a leader in that. But you talked about your commitment to the community, and it's something that I've admired in, my years in Jonesboro, watching you do things. Reverend Coleman does not just talk the talk, he walks the walk. And, and I see that in uh, days where you feed the public. I see the days where, I see it in, in the days where you hold cleanups in your neighborhood. Yeah. And you do a lot of other things. First of all, where do you find all these fish that you feed people? <laughs> you know, my, my wife and a group of people just, since you asked that question, asked me something the other day. <laughs> where do I get the energy, number one? <laughs> that's, that's a good question. That's Especially a at question. my age. Yes. And what do I think? I said, well, here's something that, that I've, I've learned. For I use the term 49 years, six months. The Lord has, I've been on this, what I call it with the spiritual side. And one thing that I learned from it is that I, either, I, I know I'm on the council, but I don't work for the council. I don't work for the community. I work for God. I'm on loan to the council. I'm on loan to the community. So when I get up in the morning, uh, I use the term, I'm, it's kind of like an ever freshly term. I'm ready to rock and roll. You know, I'm, and, and, and it, 
kind of like I hate to say it this way, but if you're in my way, I think you need to move <laughs> because uh, he's given me ideas. Uh, right now I'm working on uh, reinventing uh, free classes on how to draw house plans for kids because I did that really? as, a, as an engineering person that worked at Arkansas State for 20 years. And I'm trying to recultivate that so I can help kids in the community because they can learn a skill. So I don't really know uh, what I'm going to do when I get up in the morning. All I know is that when I get up, if I pray, those things start popping in my head. I start getting busy. Uh, my wife mentioned the other day, you know, I hadn't seen you all day. And uh, I hadn't thought about that because I don't think about that in that capacity. I think about there's something to do. I've been graced by God to be able to do it. <laughs> it's it's really amazing what he's allowed me to do, what he's allowed me to get involved in. So that to me is part of the community because I belong to this community. I serve this community. God has given me that privilege. So I look at it as a privilege. I don't look at it as a job. I don't look at it as a hard work. I don't look at it as a, a political agenda. I have the privilege of giving back to help the community, to help the council, to help people. And that means more to me. Uh, I run to a lot of people with attitudes. Some people in the city have attitudes uh, that work. And, and I wonder, what, what, you, have, you, have a, you have a gift to give and you walk around with attitude? I, I don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> and it shows, and it shows. And you, you, you do that with uh, all these little things that you, that you do, and you talked about the, the community garden. So you, you, you have a garden, you have uh, the, the occasional fish fry. What? Oh, every year, every year we want to give back to the community. So we actually have a fish plate. Okay. And uh, uh, we've been doing that for the last five years. Uh, we also get involved in the national uh, night out national and night we out. give back. Yes, we get things donated, but it's like giving back. I want to see the public. I want to see the, the faces. I want to see the key. I want to see the enjoyment of the people that come in and, and say, well, you're just not taking from us. Right. You, you want to give back to us. So we've been able to, by the grace of God, get donations to be able to uh, I, I've got a, kind of cohort this fish fry this time with a gentleman named uh, Jim Markley. He and I have thought about, have thought about this plan. And the only thing I told him, you do the cooking, I do the eating. <laughs> <laughs> you know, That's so good. he he has kind of joined up, and and so he kind of and, and and the other good thing about it, when people find out things that I do, they push me, you Ooh. know, because they don't want to be up front, and they know that I'm not looking for scenery, I'm not looking for the newspaper, I'm not looking for the news, I'm looking to do it and enjoy myself and have a good time. Uh, I kind of even joke with you every year, you know, you can't come get this place. Well, people look, look if people that that don't know me don't understand that that's that's not really true. That's just making some kind of crazy comment. Let you know, just having it's, fun. It, it was kind of like this, you know. It's kind of like going to church, and I, when I'm talking, when I'm preaching, you know, I tell people, you know, you need to smile. <laughs> open them lips. That's right. You know, if you don't, I got a little knife. You know, I, I cut it open. You open them lips, smile Makes a little bit. Yep. And so Enjoy I try to world. I try to do that a little bit sometimes because you go so place. Sometimes we so stoic. When right. the public see us on the news, we're so stoic. That that's not good. Yeah, that's not good. Well, it, it's not a. Uh, we are servants of the people, and you know the. And I think we really excuse for cutting y'all, but we really need to realize. And I think a lot of people in political positions don't get it. They don't understand that. That's not trying to put everybody down in the city because I don't. I don't know everybody in the city, but I do know this much: people like me, if I was on the other side, not on the council. I, I, it bothers me that people get a position and they think they own the position that they can do what they want to do and, and not realize that you are, that your job is to serve. Right. You don't have to agree with everything and people don't have to agree with you, but you have to have that servile mentality. And when you get to the place that, that you think you're the boss and yeah. you think you're running something, I, I don't feel sorry for people, but I have a lot of compassion for those people because I'm saying you don't get it. You're not missing. You're missing the boat. Yeah, right? you're missing the boat, man. You know. So. Well, you know that's and and that's a a lesson for all of us because we're a big community. We're eighty thousand plus, and we know and growing that and growing, and that we've got people of all backgrounds, all uh, 
description and definition. And so we've got to, we're, we, we can't have the small town mentality. You can't know everyone you deal <laughs> yeah, with. Right. You, and you really have to uh, appreciate other people's points of, of well, view and perspective. Well, I don't think sometimes we, we understand how blessed we are. We got a city that, uh, uh, if I pick on a, a group in that works for the city, is the people that pick up your trash. <laughs> I don't think because I live other places mm -hmm. that the city understand how blessed they are that they're not really paying a big dollar no. to have that taken care of. No, that's correct. Okay. That's correct. Then we got city water and light that donates back to the city. Now I've lived in places in Michigan, I've lived in Chicago, I've lived in Detroit, Michigan. You better you better have ten five five ten jobs and some part time jobs to pay for all that stuff <laughs> that right. we're getting here and it's not totally free but we're getting a subsidized offering as Very I would much. call it yeah. and people don't get it and so when when people start griping sometimes I just I just have to just smile and pray for them because I'm saying you don't get it right yeah we've got a very good system for the residents. I have never lived in a city before where I had uh, I didn't have a charge specifically for right. sanitation right. and recycling. Right. And I think uh, that's one thing that sometimes you can you can you live here long enough you start to take it for granted. And you know I'm I'm grateful that we manage uh, the money and you guys oversee the way the money the way you do because we don't pay high taxes in Jonesboro. Um, Property don't. taxes the whole nine yards. Yeah. I mean. You know, I moved back here. I, you know, I, I, when I got out of the military, I, I lived in Michigan. Then I moved back to Oklahoma. Then my whole life changed in 1974. So I moved uh, back to Fort Smith, where I'm originally from. Then I started going to school and moved to this area. And I kept thinking, man, if I would have lived this area years ago, it money wise or maybe material wise, I'd have a lot more, but you know, God allows you to go through certain right. stages to get where you are. So, so I, I guess, you know, I'm just so blessed that sometimes I just don't, I'm, it's not that I'm so happy, happy, but I'm just so blessed to see what I've got, what he's allowed me to do that to walk around with an attitude because I don't get my way. Right. <laughs> I don't get it. No. And I, I, I appreciate that uh, you have that approach to life because you bring it every day. Yeah. I've seen you for seven years now and, and you, you, you're you the same guy every day and, and I admire that. And um, I think you have learned some things that I, that that you'd share with the people. I mean, how, how old are you at this point? I'm, I'm 78 years old. 70, 78. 78, 79 in October. All right. Well, you have seen a few things oh, in this yeah. world. It's like I tell people, I've, I've been through the meal. I've been through the meal, the culture meal, the racial meal. It, it's all been good. You know, people say, man, I had a bad time. And I remember I couldn't do this and I couldn't. Oh, yeah, I talk about it a little bit. But when I, when I really realize where God has allowed this to go, especially in my life, and I, I really ain't got nothing to brag about, to be honest with you. Or you may make me mad personally, and, and, I, and I would deal with it individually because I don't deal with races, I deal with people. Yeah. That, that's another blessing that I have. You know, yes, you're white. Yes, other people, yeah, there's black, but, but I look at it from a different perspective. I, I'm not going to hate the whole white race because of one idiot. Okay? Thank you. That's I'm not going to hate the whole yeah. black race because of one idiot, or whatever color. Correct. Comes, comes into mind because I'm too busy trying to figure out how I can serve and how I can give. So I don't have, I don't have time for that type of thing. You know, I mean, we went through the, the Martin Luther King thing. I was so, I was so disgusted with uh, a, a certain race of people that it, it hurt me that you were so busy fighting instead of joining to do what is right for the people. If we go right. back to the, for the people of Jonesville. Right. That it became almost a negative thing, mm -hmm. and and uh, that that hurt me pretty bad. But you know, if the Lord said, "Well, you got to learn from that and do go and do what you got to do." Well, that's uh, th there have been a lot of opportunities in this country for people to feel like 
is is this directed at me for some reason that I don't know? And, yeah. And you know, you we we see that with uh, segments of the community feeling negative toward police. We see that with police officers feeling they're judged. Yeah. And yeah. and it's all uh, well. You're losing you your feel, blessings when you take it personal. That, that's you're losing wonderful. your blessings when you take it personal. Uh, that means it's all about you, and you're losing your blessings. Man, I want everything God got, and I'll take yours if you don't want it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I and so, you know, uh, we have a good police uh, uh, department. We have a good fire department. Yes. If you think I'm satisfied, no, I'm not satisfied. I will never be satisfied. That's one, one part of the, the agenda that God has given me. I will never be totally satisfied. I think the police department could be better. I think the fire department could be better. But yeah, that takes progress. That takes work. That takes the community. It doesn't take liking every five minutes. Right. You know, about right. what you don't have. Right. If you don't like it, let's, let's get in there and fight together. You know, some, I'm going to learn from you. Right, right. You know, and so we miss that that stage of learning from each other because we're so negative. I, I don't I don't I don't need that. And we don't have to have the same points of view or, or the same backgrounds right. to find common ground. That's right. And that's uh, that's what can make Jonesboro grow. You and, to kind of word them out. That's how we grow because we do differ. But let's differ and still speak. Yes. Let's yes. differ. Don't go home planning to what can I do to get him or what can I do to get them. I, I don't do that because I'm too good at seeing what I got to say to people's face. <laughs> I can do that real well. <laughs> uh, yes, I know that as well. Yeah. But, and I respect that. Yeah. Because you do it with sincerity. And, and you know, um, tell me about what you see where Jonesboro is right now and what you're excited about and what you want more or less or better. Well, I, I'm excited about uh, our direction for growing, building new processes. Again, I'm, I'm not I'm not totally satisfied to the fact that I don't think we're really totally doing it together from administration. And that's not so much put the administration down to make sure that's clear. And it's different not trying to put a person down. But I think the continuity that I think if administration would lose their hands just a little bit where there'd be a little bit more inclusiveness that I think the agenda would move faster. There wouldn't be uh, as much negative that we do have because we do have some negative. So I think that that pocket needs to loosen a little bit. I mean, you don't have to tell me if, if, everything you do from day to day. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. But when we get into things of building, uh, process of different building, building of something that's going to be built on the north side or so, whatever. I think the, the obligation of the city is to explore letting the city know in stages. Uh, I don't think we're taking advantage of, uh, uh, I'll say KIT. I don't think we're taking advantage of Jones Bear Sun. We, we might take advantage of one point of view, but there's more work being done behind the scenes than one or two persons up front. And mm -hmm. and I just have to be fair and say that. And yeah. so I think that needs to be more inclusive. It, it's kind of like, I can go ahead and do all these things in the community, just put myself in that position, but I promise you Sister Coleman's behind me. <laughs> and everybody knows that. Right. But when the city does certain things from administration and not recognizing that the, the whole ball game, it, we got a whole team that's working, not yeah. two or three people. That's what we have to we have to be careful with that. Um, give me an example of, of what you're you're trying you want to accomplish. Well, let, let's 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 pick it back on something that that um, I'm 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 working on, not okay. working on that we're working on now. The swimming pool. I'm going back to the swimming okay. pool. The Parker Park. Uh, Parker Park. Parker Park has so many things that could happen at Parker Park that. Everybody just focus now on the swimming pool. Oh, okay. So let's talk about what the re what can happen from the results of a swimming pool. Okay. Classes, swimming right. classes, old folks classes like me. You're talking about me a while ago, how old I am. Okay. Just little things like that, the joining of the unity. And not so much, listen carefully, not so, and it's not a, a negative toward administration, but not so much being led by administration, but being led by the community. Mm. And that's not happening right now, I don't think. And I think 
there with pump administration up or more? Well, when, we, when this thing is built and ready, uh, the, the community should be totally, in, in, totally invested. Involved. Yes, you know, yes, yes. Uh, so that, that's, that's a small example, but it's kind of like the workforce. We need so bad a workforce. I think that the chamber needs to do uh, a better job working with the city. Uh, we don't have the industry that I don't think this town could, could actually work with. We, we just don't have it. So we, most of our jobs are menial jobs. Or I call it fry cook job. When I say fry cook, I'm talking about McDonald's, these type places. Right. But we need some technology industry coming in here. And I think until uh, people come in, uh, it, this is a hard statement. This is probably the hardest statement I've said probably in a while. You cannot go out and sell Jonesboro with a all white picture of, of people. Right. Does that make sense to you? Correct. Yes. You you can't sell Amazon that because most of their corporate individuals are what? Mixed. Right. They're, they're, they're everything. Most everything. of our high end uh, organizations are mostly white. That's not putting whites down. I'm just trying to show you answer a question you asked me. Mm -hmm. That if if the chamber uh, if they all white go some places, if the city go all white uh, you know, yes, Tony's administration, but I'm talking about somebody outside. Uh, I remember one time when we were trying to get something in Jonesboro. I'll never forget it. And they asked me to go. Uh, Doug Farmer was the was the uh, was the mayor then, and I never forget we flew to Fort Smith and through some. And and what the people was excited about, they were excited about people that wasn't on the council. Oh, is that right? They were excited about. Oh man, you brought somebody. Out. You just brought a common Joe off the streets to come and look at what we can do to bring some employment in here instead of the high end. Because most of the city, it's, it's not, it's, it's kind of hard for me to say it because people, when I say this, they think that I'm taking racial. I'm not. It just happened. 90% of our high end places were all white. Right. You can't do that. That's his, that's that's the history. <laughs> but 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 as you change, you, you have to go evolve with the change. You're going to have right. to change with in order to get that type of industry in, you're going to have to have a multicultural, I don't care if it's Hispanic, I don't Absolutely. care if it's somebody from China or Chinese person, you're going to have to have that right? in order to do that. And I sure. think that's where we have failed. And I have to say in the city, but I have to say it this way. I don't want this to be where the city of Jonesville has failed. I'm thinking the city as a whole has failed. I really see it that way. Community hasn't embraced enough of, of, of the future, the way the world right. moved, right? right? Which is a more because, diverse. Because that's the way it is. You want Amazon to come here? You want uh, another big company to come here, Snaps or somebody to come here? Look at their employment at the, at the top. Right. Okay. You know? Very interesting. Yeah. yeah. I like your points. Yeah. Um, what do uh, what are you what are you most excited about in the next, say, two years? Really, uh, I'm more excited about the Multicultural Center, and let me tell you why. Because I'm looking at back to something. Our taste tax base is not like most cities. Our tax base is low. I think that that would bring so many different type of persons in here that might even be part of part of the other part of the industrial side of it. Will see, hey man, we got something that. That we don't have to leave Jonesville to go to a tennis match, right. a major tennis match. Oh, we got the, like now we got the gun place out there. We got the, that, we, we don't have, right? Jonesville got these things. See, we have the stuff. We just haven't, I just, I don't think we just have promoted them enough. Mm -hmm. You know, we have promoted yeah. from the top, but we haven't promoted back to the other question you asked, which ties into it. We haven't promoted from the middle. Because guess what? Middle class people are going to have to come to these places. They ain't going to see people up here. Because Mac, right now, the money in, in 2023 is not here anymore. It's in the middle class. Right. And, you know, uh, you made me think of something because you you and, and particularly John Street through my years have always been at the Municipal League. Right. That's the two council members that I know are well aware of everything that's right. cutting edge in, in the Municipal League. And in, what the Municipal League is, is teaches 
cities how to be cities help cities uh serve you absolutely and yeah and i think um through through all that that you do and and have done through through your education in that is is you can pass that along to the council your peers now yeah. you know they're younger and yeah. or or less experienced anyway. well even now uh i'm i'm looking for somebody young to to actually run against me when i run against it wait a minute wait, yes because you know I'm, I'm at an age that there needs to be somebody that's going to totally grow with the city i'm not sure how much long the lord's going to let me live but there need to be somebody that this that steps up and step in that spot that's going to carry the war that i'm in mm -hmm. and help have an have an argue what i call an imaginary mind of a vision to talk about again the same thing that i'm talking about job placement industry so council to me it's not a war situation i belong to the city oh yeah we voted to do the war thing and i was for that and i'm still for it but i still live in Jonesburg. right I'm still a Jones Barry. And are you are you voted a uh, ward only? Yes. Okay. Right. So the 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 reference is to a recent change where one uh, elected representative of a ward is voted only by those in the ward, and the right. other is voted right. citywide. Right. But uh, your point is, you serve all wards. You I serve have no the entire city. Yeah. And any council person that sits in that seat, whether it's ward or place, that don't think like that. If I had the authority, I'd fire that stuff. <laughs> and I respect that. Yeah. Yes. Because you can't you, you can't do that. Um, uh, you can you might can say that, but you can't be a ward person or a council person without thinking about what's happened on South South Town, what's happened on the east side of the West Town. That's just ludicrous to not to, to have that kind of frame of mind. Right. I'm yeah. just gonna take care of my ward. We've got to be bigger than that because your ward can fail if the other wards That's fail, right. and right. and you know we take that to the, the the next level by partnering with other cities. Absolutely, and it's you know. And I think that's one of the things that y'all have did, the ministry have done that I really like. Back to the question you asked, here, I think, but I think we need to also recognize that we are running those cities. You right. say, wait a minute, we're running Terrell, we're running. They were, oh yes, we, because we're at the top right now. Mm -hmm. the oh, they might be doing a little thing that's good because I've heard say, well, look what Perilbury is doing at Jonesville Camp. You got to understand the, the, the proximity of, of what's happening. And you also have to look at the mindset of the people. So they're looking at us and believe it or not, learning from us. Absolutely. More sometimes than we're learning from them. And, you know, we do talk about what other places have, and that's fine because we want to compare well, but you hear probably what I hear when we go to AML and to other cities, everybody thinks the world of Jonesboro that's around right. Arkansas. That's right. And uh, it's the, the outside mean, looking in looks pretty good. And people are moving in right now. People yes. are moving in. That's why we can, we don't have too many places to go because <laughs> we don't. our borders will begin to get... I mean, we're right on top of Brooklyn. Right. <laughs> I mean, we're right on top of Brooklyn. Right. We don't have too much places we can go west. And we almost don't have too many places we can go north because people have moved in. People have. That's right. And it's the same thing with the, the going south. So the explosion of Jonesville, especially in the last 10 years, is synonymous, man. It just, sometimes it blows my mind. It comes with, uh, it comes with responsibility and it, it, it's, it's good. It's, it's, it's fun to see new things and you see a place, hey, what's that gonna be? You know, yeah. that's that's yeah, that's interesting. It but interesting. back to the other part of the industry when when I make the statement, uh, it's it's not a downplay of the same, it's not a downplay of the city. But I think there need to be a tighter rein on when you go places to let people see the different factions of I hate to use the word, but color or whatever it is, or culture, whatever mm -hmm. it is, uh, because that's what they're gonna know. Well, can I live there? You know, can I, as a Japanese person, can I live there as a Hispanic person right. or whatever national, can I live there and be comfortable? And when we don't have that, when they don't see that from the top, that's in any, that's, matter of fact, that's in any city. Yeah. It should, it just be honest it's with true. you. It, has, it needs to be. So that's not a negative towards Jonesville, but that's just where it is right now. Right. Yeah. 
and we'll, we'll get there. I, I yeah. believe. I believe we have enough good people to to see yeah. that. But uh, because I'm, I'm I'm already thinking, what can I do after I leave the council to be in that in that in that reign of being able to go places with the city or the chamber, you know, put, help me put myself in that position where I can do that. I need mean, to just travel with them and say, you know, hey, we, it's everybody. It's the middle class, it's the old folks. <laughs> we got something for everybody. You guys need to come on, you know. Well, that's, and let's leave, leave it with one last thing that you want to do, accomplish, whether it's for the city or for, your, for Charles Coleman or maybe the First Lady Coleman. Well, um, I'm run by my wife. No, people don't understand that. <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm still the yes ma'am, no ma'am person. And that's just it ain't nothing I can do about that, brother. <laughs> you know, uh only thing I think we need to do right now is big, build a bigger city hall. A bigger city hall. You know what? We I would love to be able to fill it up because we need more people to work here. Yeah. This is yeah. a lot of I, apartments. I, and, and, and and I say that when I say fill up, a build up, I think that's the public there needs to be more public involvement to come to find out what they can do, uh, show up and see that we're doing. But I think be it only way they, they, they need to know what we're doing. I think right now as a whole, they don't totally know. So there need to be more publications out, more advertisement of whatever we need to do. Right. Say, this is what we're doing. And you guys need to come on your board because I think you'd have more support than, than you think. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. He's the Reverend Dr. Charles Coleman, and he is your council member. What ward do you end up? Ward 2. Ward 2. And uh, you've been serving the city for 13 years. 13 years. And if, we're, if we do right, we've got 13 more. Oh, wait. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, Reverend Coleman, thank you for taking the time to Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. God bless you, too. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Yeah.